Muscle spindles are complex sensory receptors usually lying deep in the belly of the muscle. The muscle is innervated by alpha motor nerve fibers arising in the anterior horn of the spinal cord. Each alpha fiber divides to innervate more than 100 muscle fibers. The spindles are innervated by smaller gamma or fusimotor nerve fibers, each of which supplies several spindles. The nerve lies across a series of platinum electrodes. Stimuli are applied through these electrodes. This electrode is connected to earth and afferent or efferent action potentials are recorded through these electrodes. The chucks are attached to two electromagnetic muscle pullers so that the muscle and later the isolated spindle may be stretched under controlled conditions. Each spindle consists of a number of specialized muscle fibers termed intrafusal muscle fibers. The intrafusal fibers are surrounded by a thick connective tissue capsule which widens at the equator to form a lymph space so that the whole is fusiform or spindle shaped. The longer fibers are attached to fasciculi of extrafusal muscle fibers which lie in parallel. If the spindle is cut transversely at this point, it looks like this. Two intrafusal fibers lie adjacent to the much larger fibers of the extrafusal fasciculi. Cut through the lymph space, it looks like this. The capsule has separated from the intrafusal fibers which lie free in the lymph space. At the point of maximum diameter of the spindle, the intrafusal fibers are packed full of nuclei, at least one of which can be seen in each fiber in a transverse section. Surrounding each intrafusal fiber in the nuclear region is a spiral sensory termination. These spirals are all attached to the same group 1A afferent nerve fiber and together form the primary sensory nerve ending. Adjacent to the primary sensory ending is the secondary sensory ending. Unlike the primary ending, the sensory terminations are concentrated on the smaller muscle fibers. The number of secondary sensory endings varies from zero to five in different spindles, one being found most commonly. The secondary sensory ending will be ignored and attention focused on the primary sensory ending. If the spindle is passively stretched, these spiral terminations will be pulled apart as in this isolated living muscle spindle. As the muscle is alternately stretched and relaxed, the primary sensory spirals open and close. The loudspeaker monitors the afferent discharge in the group 1A afferent fiber. The action potentials in the 1A fiber are recorded on a storage oscilloscope. The stretch applied to the spindle is shown on the lower trace. Initial length, stretch at constant velocity, final length. Note the high frequency of action potentials during the stretch. On a second storage oscilloscope, the frequency of the 1A discharge is plotted against time above the movement trace. Initial frequency low, peak frequency during the movement, adapting down to a steady value appropriate to the final length.
To our original diagram, we now add the 1A afferent fiber, synapsing with the alpha efferent fiber. When the muscle is stretched, the afferent discharge frequency rises. The efferent discharge is thereby increased, causing the production of greater tension in the muscle. This is the stretch reflex. The muscle tends to resist extension. If a single supramaximal stimulus is applied to the whole nerve, the muscle twitches and the spindle is shortened. During the muscle twitch, the group 1A discharge ceases. Note this pause in the 1A discharge during the recorded twitch. The next chart demonstrates that the muscle spindle and the extrafusal muscle are innervated by different motor nerve fibers and that the gamma fusimotor fibers have a higher threshold to stimulation than the alpha fibers. This spindle is exposed in the muscle but not isolated. Repetitive stimulation of alpha fibers unloads the spindle. The speaker now monitors the efferent discharge. gamma fibers are recruited, the intrafusal bundle also contracts. Alpha on, gamma on, gamma off, alpha off. Alpha on, gamma on, gamma off, alpha off. The intrafusal fibers in our isolated spindle contract in response to repetitive stimulation of gamma fibers with bursts of stimuli at 100 pulses per second. There is marked local contraction of the muscle fibers, the cross striations coming close together at the site of the motor end plate. Here is a similar response beneath a different motor end plate. If the frequency of the stimulation is decreased, so is the degree of contraction. 75 per second, 50 per second, 30 per second. At 10 pulses per second, contraction is hardly visible. Now the frequency is increased smoothly from 10 to 100 pulses per second. Gamma N plates responsible for this contraction are more elongated than extrafusal motor N plates and often exhibit a bouton termino appearance. Gamma N plates are now added to the diagram. They are found near to the point at which the lymph space ends. In the living spindle, a bunching up of the intrafusal bundle occurs in the contracting zone. The contraction results in the extension of almost the whole of the intrafusal bundle within the lymph space and marked extension of the primary and secondary sensory terminations. This primary sensory ending is being extended by intrafusal contraction. 
The left hand pole is pulling the spirals to the left. The right hand pole is pulling them to the right. The two ends stretch the middle. The degree of extension of the primary spirals depends upon the frequency of discharge in the gamma motor neurons. At 10 pulses per second, the extension is hardly visible. At 25 per second, it can be seen. At 50 per second, it is pronounced. At 75 per second, it is maximal. 100 per second produces no further extension. In summary then, an increased outflow in the gamma motor neurons causes local contraction within both poles of the spindle. The primary sensory ending is stretched and the frequency of the 1A discharge rises. This causes an increase in the outflow in the alpha motor neurons and the muscle will develop additional tension and will shorten. This pathway for the production of voluntary movement is called the gamma or indirect pathway. The muscle may also be activated by the direct or alpha pathway. Impulses from higher centers impinge directly on the alpha motor neurons. The alpha outflow increases and the muscle shortens. In the production of a voluntary movement, it is probable that both the direct alpha pathway and the indirect gamma pathway containing the muscle spindle are involved at some stage.